Hey guys, welcome back to Northern League to Legend. Today we've got only the one game for you. It's the final of the European Championship against England. Then after that we'll have a wee quick look around the new club that we joined during the tournament. But first of all, let's get stuck into today's only match against England. This is the team we're going to send out for it. Donnarumma and goals. Ruggeri, Mancini, Di Michel, Pelazon at the back. Barella and Lucatelli in the midfield. Keane, Esposito, Chiesa, supporting Grassi up top. <coughs> I don't really know who comes into this as favourites for it. I think both teams have played pretty well this tournament. I know it's football manager, England and English club teams are usually a wee bit overpowered compared to other nations, but I think we've got a decent enough team to give England a right go of it. And... I think we could maybe win this in a very close contest. Keys is now in. Esposito heads just wide. That was very unlucky. That was a good early chance for us. But I think the quality that English uh, the English team has, we really need to be taking our chances. And Gianluca Mancini, who's in for Bastoni, has put us 1-0 up. That's a fantastic time to go ahead just before 20 minute mark. Just as the game was settling down, we managed to nick a goal. But as I was saying before that, the English team, tons of ability in there. So many young wonder kids now coming into their prime years. So I'm expecting a very tough second half now. We're halfway there. Let's pump the fists. Get the players going. Another 45 minutes and we are tournament champions. This will be the first uh, international trophy. Trophy of the save. Or we, it is also the first international tournament we're in. Technically not if you include the Nations League. But I don't really count that as a decent trophy to go for. I'd rather the Euros and the World Cup. Ruggeri now, going down the left-hand side back to Barella, who goes all the way back to Mancini, who Lucatelli's now sent off. We're now going to be under immense pressure from England here. Grassi is not playing at his best at all. So Esposito can go up there. I think we're going to need to change the... Team about just give us two seconds, right? So, I've managed to change the team uh, players about, uh, we've changed formation, we've dropped to near enough a 4 4 2. Uh, well, as we've got a guy sent off, it's now a 4 4 1. But Raspadori is just a wee bit higher because he can't for some reason. To me, if you can play here, you can play there, but apparently, he can't. So Hopefully, with the near enough the two banks of four, we can put up with England's pressing in this half. And yeah, that's fine. I've already done it. Fifteen minutes to go. Donnarumma with the goal kick. Up towards Esposito, but we don't get it. Abraham now to Trent Alexander-Arnold. England, I think, are just going to pile on this pressure. They've got the man advantage. And Abraham is in, and what a save from Donnarumma. Keeping us ahead in the match. 11 minutes to go. Cleared by Ruggeri, I think that was, and then cleared by Barella. Donnarumma with the goal kick again. I think we'll just go very defensive. Our assistant manager suggested that a second ago. But Trent is in behind the left back and he fluffs that up. So, pretty pleased with that. I can deal with that, more of that, please. Inside the last couple of seconds, 
and Italy are the European champions once again, just like they were in at the European Championships in 2021, beating England in the final once again. At least this time it wasn't on penalties, but it was just as much of a nail biter. And that is our first international trophy of non-league to legend this year. Hopefully, it will not be the last. But pretty happy with that. I did think we were going to go far in the tournament, but there are a lot of good teams in Europe, so I knew it would have been a tough one, and the last two matches were tough ones against Spain and then England, but we won it. We're European champions, and that calls time on our international duty right now with Italy, so I'll quickly continue, and then we'll introduce you to the new club, for those of you that haven't seen the spoilers throughout the videos. And we'll have a quick look around. And maybe have a look at a few of the star players that we've got. Right. And for those of you that didn't know. It, we joined Liverpool in the summer. I'm still kind of surprised that we actually managed to get the Liverpool job. They never had the best season last season. But I applied for it. Thinking a bit of a long shot. But we'll see. And they offered us the interview. And then we played one match of the Euros. Came back and they offered us a job. So pretty happy with that. Big, big team. Big, big expectations. Uh, a lot better expectations than what was happening at Middlesbrough. I don't know if you've seen it the last time we were with Middlesbrough. But basically the board were wanting Champions League finish. Uh, finishing the Champions League place and then starting from next season we weren't to compete for the title we were to win the title uh, Premier League title that is while continuing to stay in Europe Champions League uh, to be specific we were then con to continue with winning the league titles after that uh, which I thought like, was a bit of an over exaggeration I don't think Middlesbrough are anywhere near that type of power. But then two days later, the chairman said that he was going to cut back the funding. So we weren't good enough with the money we were spending. So we had to spend more. We had to bring in the top, top superstars on the planet. But he was then cutting, he cut our budget in half. I've never known that to happen. Like, I think we had... Like 80 million, 75, 80 million. We then had 40 million. He literally took 40 million off us. And to get the players that we need, like 40 million, 50 million, that's one player. Unless we were to find a right bargain basement player. But to compete and to stay in the job of Middlesbrough, we needed to buy proven world class players and not take a gamble. Uh, we did have the structure at Middlesbrough to go on and become one of the best in the planet. Uh, Middlesbrough, they have now, not I was going to say we, but we don't have anymore. They have a fantastic core of young players. Not going to lie, I've scouted them. So we'll see what the Liverpool scouts think of them. But enough about Middlesbrough. Let's have a look around Liverpool FC. So, we'll have a look at where they finished last season. They finished fifth. So, five places above where we managed to finish with Middlesbrough. They only just missed out on Champions League by two points behind Man United. But apart from that, it was a top five after that. Nobody was anywhere near them. So hopefully we can push that further up and we can get in them into the Champions League. But this year, again, for us, will be Europa League football. So this is the team that we've got the now. Let's just clear everything. We do have a couple of different formations on the go, but we'll see that in the next episode. But we've got Alisson and... Jakob 
I'm not even going to tr try and pronounce this chap's second name. Uh, I'm hoping he won't be at the club for much longer. He is transfer listed. We are looking to move him on. So hopefully he'll move on soon. We've then got this chap, Ibanez. I think that's how you pronounce it. He looks like a decent defender. 29-year-old Brazilian. He's one of the better players at the club. We've also got Andrew Omobamadele. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Sorry again if I've butchered that guy's name. But he is a 26-year-old Irish player. He looks pretty decent. we not going to lie. We were looking at him for my, uh, Middlesbrough a couple of years ago. But we weren't able to get him. We've then got Trent Alexander-Arnold. Who is still one of the best players at the club. If not in the game at this point. Really glad that he never had a top performance against our Italy team about 10 minutes ago. We've then got Robin Gossens who is a 34-year-old German left-back. We'll probably be looking to move him on. He is wanted there now, but he's out injured. So he is wanted, so we'll see if we can push him out, or move him on. We've then got Andy Robertson, who we all know, 34-year-old Scottish left-back. For being 34, he's still got really good attributes. He and a couple of other Liverpool Players last season were out of contract, and I feel that he could have still he could probably still help the squad, if not on the field, off the field and behind the scenes. Virgil Van Dijk was one that let we let go because he was retiring anyway, so we couldn't sign him. So pretty good to not have him. But we've got then got Milinkovic Savic, thirty three year old Serbian. He still looks pretty decent. He's losing a bit of his pace, but look at these stats for a 33-year-old. Amazing mental ability. Still really, really good physical ability. And the technicals, first touches, long shots, passing, technique. Still a world-class player at the age of 33. Then got Maddie Kamara, a Guinean central midfielder. will probably be moving that chap on. Despotovic, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He... Contracted to his, uh, he's currently on the loan list, so we'll probably move him out on loan. I don't think he's going to be like live up to much potential. We've then got Mecha Topalovic, Topalovic, who is a 20 year old Serbian international. He's got eight caps already for the Serbian national team. He looks as if he could be a really good player, not gonna lie. Five, uh, four and a half star ability, two and a half star current ability for now. He looks as if he could become a real gem here at Liverpool. Then we've got Nicolas Pizzacani, 20 year old Argentine midfielder. He has five star potential ability, two and a half star current ability. He looks like a really good player. Like already, I think he could do a good job in the Liverpool squad. Uh, Weston McKinney's next, 29 year old USA, or American, sorry, player. He, he looks really good. Weston McKinney is a player that I've always wanted to use in this game and might not have got him in his peak, like his top years. He was probably going to start to decline, but still really happy to get to use him. Kevin Montero, 21-year-old Mexican. He's already capped at international level. Five-star current ability. Really good young player. He's already wanted by, by Leverkusen on loan. Who have to see how he does in pre-season before we make a decision on that. Then we have Cyril Kempf. This was a player that we were actually close to signing for Middlesbrough, but we never had the funds to bring him in uh, at the time. So I think two days later, after we came out with the deal, Liverpool signed him. And he's been playing okay for them. I think he is a fantastic young player. He can play... To me, he can be moulded into anything we want him to be. He's only 20 years old. Uh, he's got 5-star potential ability, 3-star current ability. So we need to play, give him a lot of minutes and develop him into the player that we want. We've then got Brahim Diaz, who is a very good midfielder. We'll probably be playing him more... In the centre mid as a Mazala, because we're not playing with wingers. I don't think we're going to be playing with centre mids, uh, centre attacking mids. So 
We'll be trying to make him more into a centre midfielder, but again, he looks like a really, really top player. And Pedri, he will be one of the nailed on starters. He looks absolutely fantastic. He's 25 year old. Everybody knows the guy. Really excited to use this chap in this game. I think he's going to be amazing in that Mazala position. Then, obviously, we've got the Pharaoh himself, Mohamed Salah. He's 36 years old, and look at this guy's stats. He's still world class, four star current ability, four star potential ability. He's not going to get any better, to be completely honest with you. I don't know why he's training there. He'll probably be playing more as a striker. As I says, we're not playing with wingers. Josh Phillips, young Englishman. Looks decent. Four-star current ability. We'll probably look to see if we can upgrade in the forward positions uh, or the backup or the other forward positions because the next chap needs no introduction. And that is this chap. Erling Haaland, to me, best striker. He will become the best striker on the planet in real life, and he probably is the best striker in the game. Five-star current ability, five-star potential. Don't really need to say anything else about this guy. He, Wherever he plays, he scores goals. So he will be the focus of our attack. We'll have a wee look, see in the unders. See if we can see anybody. Gomez here. 20 year old Brazilian, looks like a really good player, 5 star potential, 2 star current ability. Next, Vicha Bogner, Croatian, winger, see if we can mould him more into a central midfielder and I think he would be an awesome player for us. Next standout is Pete Dewhurst, Dewhurst, 19 year old Englishman, could play out in the wings or up front, we'll train him to be a striker as we don't play with any wingers. He is two star current ability, five star potential. He looks like a wee, wee gem. So um, I'll look to mould him into the player that we also would like at the club. And under 18s, we don't really have anybody. The best player here, or best potential wise, is Edward Lambert, 16 year old Englishman, central midfielder. Looks decent. Don't think he'll live up to much hype at all, to be honest with you, but. We'll see how he gets on, but that's the players. The finances are looking like this: four hundred million in the bank, two hundred and twenty on the transfer budget, six million in the wage budget. Projections look nice and healthy. Debts and loans, transfer debt of twenty million. Let's face it, I'm here now. That will probably go up to about one hundred, two hundred. We did do a few transfers in between the euros, so from Lee Clark up were all ones that were already done. Uh, I would have liked to get this guy. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. I'll know I'll butcher it. But we did. I did want to keep him, but he was already arranged to go. But we sold Diogo Jota to Roma. He he's a really good player. He's set one. Can play up front. But I want to inject a bit of youth into the team. We then sold Inaki. Pena to Real Madrid. He was a backup goalkeeper. We weren't going to use him, so didn't want to keep him around. And Gerard Bowen, we sold to Liverpool for four. Eh, sorry, Villarreal for forty million. Again, he plays mainly as a winger or the attacking midfield position. He's thirty-one. Don't think I was going to use him, so we sold him on. So. Competitions wise, we have the challenge for the Premier League, reach a final of the Europa League, reach a final of the FA Cup, and the Carabao Cup is not important. <sighs> we do have a few transfers on the go at the moment. One player, one staff member. We're trying to bring in our assistant from Middlesbrough. Loved him at Middlesbrough. I would like him here. And Nico Pelazon of Bologna, who is also my. Right back for Italy. We've got a 61 million bid in for him now. I was kind of rushed into that because there was a few more bids in for him. Inter Milan and Juventus are now wanting him. I don't know if anybody else has put a bid in for him. It's just us the now. So they must have rejected the other teams. But I really want him. Apart from that, I don't think anything else is happening. We've had a look around the club. We've seen... We've had a look at the players... 
finances, the expectations, nothing else is really happening. Tactics we'll have a look at in the next episode. Speaking of which, the next episode will be West Brom and the Burnley. First two matches of the Premier League. Um, we'll also have a look at all the transfers that I've managed to get in and out up to that point. So we'll leave this episode here. If you liked that in any way, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more Football Manager Twitter content on the channel, please subscribe, turn notifications on, and thank you very much for watching.